Uh, to begin this morning, I'm going to give a quick uh, five-minute intro, and then we'll jump to the keynote. Uh, we'll switch laptops, but uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. As you can see, it's a little bit like a United Nations uh, of all the different countries. My, I'm, as most of you know, Christopher Mason, uh, coming from Wall Street on Medicine, and uh, representing the New York City Hub for the for Medisa. And I want to start with a little bit of thanks. So very much, I want to thank uh, Dr. Lei Ming Chi, who's uh, sitting right there, who is the Shanghai uh, Hub. And, uh, Leming is an old friend and colleague, and uh, really this couldn't have happened without him, so thanks very much for him, as well as the Sloan Foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and also I wanted to take some time to thank also Abraham and Sophia, who are sitting here and there, and thanks them as well for coming <laughs> Again, none of this would happen without them. So, um, and then of course we have a lot of uh, sponsors, so please visit them during the day. We have Promega and then Illumina and Kaiju in the back, so please uh, visit them. We also have some collaborators computationally, Calvin Slide and Codex over here, and then uh, of course the sponsoring academic institutions. So again, thanks very much uh, to the sponsors. So one last round of applause again. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go quickly through an intro. Um, as most of you know, every home, every building, every seat, every chair is itself a little ecosystem. And a lot of our interest in metagenomics has come from the fact from some pilot work that we did uh, in the New York City subway, where half the DNA, uh, when you blast it, doesn't match anything yet that's known. And so really a big question has become, you know, who is there uh, and what are they doing? And so some of the ways we're looking is to see what are they making, what are they processing. And I would actually say that this is not the first time where half of the world is unknown. If you look back historically, we know that when Columbus set sail in 1492, what he thought the world was versus what it actually was, of course, was very different. And so here you can see what he thought he was going to when he went west. Of course, things changed. And this is very much analogous to what happened when the microscope was first invented in 1673. It opened our eyes to a new world that was all around us. And today, what we have are not just microscopes, but actually molecular microscopes that let us tease out the world around us. This is some work that we've done for sequencing quality standards, and now, of course, there's many types of ways to sequence things. So one of the excitements, though, of, of sequencing is it's really cheap. So you can go sequence a subway, you can sequence yourself, you can sequence anyone and anything, because it's much cheaper today to actually do sequencing. As you can see here, the cost for human genome is much lower. And this has led to some work that we've done with actually Lei Shi to try and understand human uh, genomes, in particular, when you sequence out to say 12 billion reads, you sequence very, very, very deeply of human samples and RNA, we can say that you keep finding you know, new genes are discovered, and it also depends on which tools and which annotation you use. And this, of course, is not just true for human genetics, but we now know this is also true uh, for metagenomics. And so here, if you sequence deeper and deeper from a complex sample, like something from a canal, <coughs> the deeper you sequence, you keep finding more and more organisms, but the question is, you know, what is there, uh, how do you study such a complex world? And I think the way we have to do it is not just looking, say, within, for example, New York City is where these samples came from, because it's a lot like the story of when you, uh, if you've lost your keys and you're looking for your keys, you look by the lamppost, there's this old story that, you know, if you find and you look by the lamppost, people say, well, why are you looking by the lamppost? There's, why, there's all these other places you could look and say, well, it's the only place I have light, but if you only look where you have light, you might be doing something kind of like uh, this. And so here's just New York City, but there's this entire world around where we just have light. And so the sequencers are to some degree our light, but we cannot forget the sort of rest of the world around us. And so the best way to do this is to build context, to look across the world, to do it as a, as a, as a group, essentially. So, and global projects, you know, by their nature, transcend nationality, borders, and customs. And I think only as a global team can we actually do this kind of global work. And so uh, this is what we're doing together. So um, this was the old website. It's a quick bit of housekeeping on what we've done. This was the old website, and now it's been updated, as most of you know, with us a lot more information that's present. And of course, uh, the list of cities grew from last year. It was 15 cities. Uh, we're looking at starting, you know, we restarted in New York. It's now actually, uh, actually scores of cities. At this point, 58 cities working together. And if you go to this map, you can actually now browse. Uh, let's see if here. You can browse essentially all of the data as it was created. You can see on June 21st, at one point we were hitting 150 samples per hour being collected globally. And so this interface lets us mine the data. And so we'll have a little session later where we'll walk through the site. But if you go on the website today, so metasub.org is not yet blocked by the Chinese government, so that's good. Uh, hopefully we'll stay that way, I think. And so, but since we have good international collaboration, I think we'll be fine. Uh, but you can see this is what's on the map, but we know from other an unannotated samples we're at about 6,142 6, samples total taken. And again, thank you all of you. This couldn't have been possible without your help. So 
So uh, we just updated the website in the last three days, and you can go and mine the data and see when and where things were collected. And then we'll have a video that summarizes that uh, at the end of the day. So, uh, and that's, and it also is a quick summary, of some highlights from that first day. So quickly, you know, this is what we talked about last year, that we want to do collection, computational methods development, education, and think about design. We, of course, want to make things very transparent, open, and shared. So we're doing a lot of work on standards development. This is some work that Scott Tai will talk about later today. It's what's now been launched is the International Metagenomics and Microbiome Standards Group from NIST. We also want to make sure that things are uh, transparent uh, to all players and that we keep things very open for everyone. And then finally, we want to share things. So we want to be able to share the data and release it for people uh, to play with. So that's the principles of the, of the group. And the last sort of two minutes is just so what have we seen so far in 2016. So uh, when we launched, uh, this was sort of our room. We were tracking everyone who was doing things in, in the city. We had city councilmen in New York City come help uh, us swab. This is uh, us doing it in the subway. Actually, Ken McGrath did a Zoom because he was trying to see what she was looking at me. She was looking, this woman here looking at me. That's Ken McGrath. Thank you, Ken. We did uh, some swabbing of the turnstiles. Here you can see we did get one uh, badge because some police really were excited by the study, so they wanted us to get a look at their badge. This happened, the first badge microbiome, I think. That's what that we did also get, uh, see this place, this place. We have a, a kid who helped us out when we were swabbing. And uh, this was covered by CBS, and you can see he was helping us do the collections. Uh, and so that was really fun. Then we also had, of course, Marcel. So Nicola gave a great uh, summary to help everyone, I think, that first day. Thanks, Nicola, for that summary. We had uh, Elorne, Nigeria, that had a great collection day. We had, of course, uh, Melbourne, Australia, you can see here, Bogota, Colombia. We had San Diego, Chile. We'll talk, uh, everyone in the cities will be presenting today, so I'm just going to go through quickly. Uh, Sacramento and California, you can see here, uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Well, of course, they had a mascot. They've upped the ante for next year. Everyone needs to have a mascot. <laughs> but think about that. And then Hong Kong is doing the collections. And we got great media response, everything from looking at what's in the desert to uh, there's the Chronicles, Harvard Magazine. Uh, Boston just released their microbiome paper, the Southern Microbiome this week as well. We'll talk about that later today. The great response in Barcelona, and then also the Barcelona team. They have their, they've also upped the ante. They got t-shirts, bags, new logos. The competition is, is up for next year, I think. And then, of course, uh, there's some other great correspondence of what people are doing in the subways. This is, again, another thing in Portugal. Uh, and also, this is Klaus, who's doing work in Sweden. And then, again, uh, one more collection in Sweden. There's a lot, a lot of great coverage. So I included all the links. Oh, also, Cosmos and and Kaijin joined. Also, the official uh, sponsors of the project. And Aluna's also uh, donating raised to the project. So it's been a great collaboration as well with industry partners. And then, um, and there's the links of everything that I found. So a few quick lessons in the last one minute of what we learned. Chargers. You need chargers <laughs> if you're out all day. Definitely lesson number one is if you're sampling all day, you probably need a charger. Thanks, Marcus, for that. Uh, also, you need to get lunch. Uh, it's hard because you can see here, three minutes per swab is very exhausting to people. It's very hard for them. Uh, I went for the pretzel. It's my personal one there. And then you have to be prepared for anything. So in Barcelona, there was a strike on the day of sampling, so they had to adjust things there, uh, Daniela. And so at the, in closing, this is really is a five-year study that will give us a unique view of everything that's happening. And we'll talk more about the Olympium today, as well as eventually to hopefully compare it to Tokyo. And uh, later, you know, this will be for discussion points later. There's many questions we'll look at. So do the antibiotic prescriptions match what we see in antibiotic resistance markers? Can we look at humans and how they're responding? If we look at their immunological repertoire, we should think about all the other organisms since we're doing shotgun sequencing, and then we should think about you know, forensic capacity. Is prokaryotes or eukaryotes better for figuring out where you've come from in the world? We'll find out. Um, how many you know, AMRs can be transferred from dead DNA is an ongoing question. What are the extreme sites in different cities, and what surface types actually contribute? These are all ongoing questions that we're thinking about and we'll discuss in the next two days, as well as many others. And then the final comment, I'd say, is uh, the current plan is actually to have the meeting next year in Stockholm and end of July right before ISCB, which is on the 21st and 25th. So uh, please put that in your calendars. It's the plan for next year. And then right at the end of the day, we're going to have a summary video, but we're having some download problems now. So we'll get this up for later. <laughs> and um, I actually now I basically want to invite, uh, so Eric, oh, well, first, thanks, Metasub. Go Metasub. <laughs> thanks, I'm for this. And then, uh, thank you. So while Eric connects, um, uh, Eric Alm is a professor at MIT who's actually very well known 